Lord Jesus, help us to celebrate this Mass as if it's our first, our last, and our only Mass. Please stand. As gold in the furnace, the Lord put his chosen to the test. As sacrificial, sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. And in due time, they will be honored. And grace and peace will be with the elect of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today is the memorial of St. Charles Luanda, a great man of faith and a great convert to Christianity. He sought to bring others to the faith and he won the prize of martyrdom and eternal life. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field with which that the field which is your church watered by the blood shed by Saints Charles Luanga and his companions may be fertile and always yield an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, as I remember you con constantly in my prayers night and day. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design, and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality. 
to light through the gospel for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed and am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord be on my heart and my lips, proclaim his gospel worthy and well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brothers die, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants. And the third likewise. The seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they, arise, when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> In the Gospel, there are several major groups that oppose Jesus. We know the Pharisees, we know the Herodians. We know of the Sadducees. And here we have the Sadducees. The Sadducees believed that there was no resurrection of the dead. That after someone died, that was it. And so they posed this question to Jesus. It's almost mocking the idea that there could be a resurrection. Quoting Abraham, or quoting Moses, and saying that if someone's brother dies, then they need to marry the widow to care for the widow. And they pose this hypothetical situation after seven deaths, whose husband would the widow be in heaven? And Jesus gives an explanation. He says, you know what? God is the God of the living, not the dead. There will be no marriage in heaven. 
And these people will be like angels. What he's saying is, marriage is an institution of exclusive love between a man and a woman. But upon death, and once we enter heaven, through the grace of God, through the mercy of our Lord Jesus, all exclusivity falls apart. We only are in inclusive love. What that means is, yes, when we die and we, uh, we will know our spouse in heaven, absolutely. But we know our spouse from the perspective of inclusive love. There is no bond that says that this, these two people in heaven have something that no one else shares. Yeah, they'll have the knowledge that they shared a life together in, on earth, but in heaven, everyone's love is inclusive. It, it's immersed in the oneness of God. This is important to understand this distinction between exclusive and inclusive love. The marriage life is meant to show how intimate and how close two can become like one. That's difficult, I know, but it's what it's meant. In religious life, priesthood, religious brothers, religious sisters is meant to show this inclusivity of love that hopefully we are trying to love or we are loving as Christ would love. In heaven, we all have that radical oneness that marriage presupposes on earth, but we also have that radical, um, all-encompassing love will be one with the saints, one with the Blessed Mother, one with even the Godhead himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I am the God, or God is the God of the living and not the dead. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Charles Luanga. I think it's important to kind of share a little bit about his life because he is an example of how God is the God of the living. He lived in the late 1880s. Actually, he died as a martyr in 1886. Christian missionaries had only been in Uganda, the Central African nation, for just maybe five, six years. And the king of Uganda, King Mwanga, had lots of evil desires. He ruled ruthlessly. But one of his evil desires is to abuse young men and boys. And so he surrounded himself with, at his court with a, all these young men and boys and he would regularly abuse them. Charles Luanga, who had been catechized and taught and baptized by these Christian missionaries, saw it as his mission as part of the court to prevent these boys from being hurt by this king. And so soon the king began to see that these boys weren't coming around and, and he became angry and he found out that it was because Charles Luanga and the other Christians were teaching the faith to these boys and keeping them from the king. The king was irate and sentenced them all to death. They all professed that they were Christians and that pr they prayed to God. And they all ended up dying with God's words on their mouths. Now St. Charles Luanga understood that God is the God of the living and that it was his duty to bring others into the faith and save other people from this horrible, evil king. Today, because of the witness of St. Charles Luanga, there are estimated 35 million Christians in Uganda. 35 million. Just over a century 
after St. Charles Luanga began to catechize and gave his example of faith. He showed that God is truly the God of the living. Please stand. We bring to Jesus all of our different prayers, asking him to hear and answer them. We pray for the Holy Church. We pray for Pope Francis, Edward, our bishop, Greg, his assistant. We pray for the priests and deacons of the Diocese of Dallas, especially those who have recently moved. We pray for the priests and deacons of St. Joseph, especially for Father Joseph, Father Delphi, for Father Jesus, for Deacon Randy, Deacon Richard, and Deacon Tim, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for greater understanding of the sacredness of every human person and into any kind of prejudice and racism within our country. We pray for the just results of peaceful protests throughout our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to the evil of the violent uh, protests and the vandalism that has occurred throughout our nation. We pray for the calming of the anger that has stirred this. We pray for repentance of the people who have just sought to, to do this on their own accord, to sow division or hurt. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our country. We pray especially for our president, our governors, our mayors, our leaders of different civic and civil um, industries and works. We pray that they may have the courage and strength to be able to stand for what is true and just in our culture and our civilization. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the medical personnel who are treating people who are sick with COVID-19. We pray for their protection, their peace of mind on this day. We pray for all those who are in the medical field who are furloughed or who have lost wages or work during this time. We pray for God's door of providence to open for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our, the people of Dallas County and Collin County and the area in North Texas. We pray for our whole country that may be a greater awakening to the need to help others not become infected with this COVID-19 virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for marriages and young people, that they may see the grace in, of the sacrament of marriage and see the evil of cohabitation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the faithful departed, especially those close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all the intentions that we bring forward to this holy mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-loving God, we ask that you may hear and answer all these prayers we offer you. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, so become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of the water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Please stand. We offer you, sac your, we offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel if you're able. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, Greg, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand if you're kneeling. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Mm -hmm. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, nona nobis pace. Mingle the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us, receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not am worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. past her lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for each other. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his holy ones. I invite you to join me in this prayer of act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Eucharist. Body, blood, soul, and divinity, you are present. And although at this time I cannot receive you into my body and soul through this holy sacrament, I receive you spiritually into my heart. I invite you to take your place there on the throne that I have prepared for you so that I may receive your love and you may receive mine. And I look forward toward the day when I can receive you again in this most august sacrament into my body and soul. Amen. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials, steadfast in faith and in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O good St. Joseph, we ask that you may come to our aid in our time of need. Intercede for us for an end to the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever.